In this video, we're going to install ESXi 5.0 using the CIMC, which is the remote access tool for the UCS, C-Series, and B-Series servers. Now we're going to be installing onto the C-Series servers, but the steps are the same for both since we'll be installing through the CIMC. In order to complete this video, you'll need the following. You'll need an ESXi 5.0 ISO downloaded from the VMware website, if you don't have a license for it, you can go ahead and install the trial edition. You'll need the IP address for the ESXi 5.0 host that you're installing. You'll need the subnet mask, gateway IP address, the name of the ESXi host, the VLAN ID, and optionally, you'll need the primary and secondary DNS IP addresses. On this screen, we're looking at the KVM console, which we've launched from the CIMC tool. Now we've shown in a previous video how to access the CIMC tool, so we're not gonna go through those steps here. We've clicked the Virtual Media tab, and from this screen, we're gonna be able to mount the ESXi 5.0 ISO onto the server. To do that, we'll click the Add Image button and then drill down onto the hard drive to select the ISO image. So now that we've selected the ISO, we'll click the map checkbox to mount it. And then we'll switch over and click the KVM tab. And from the menu, we'll choose Control-Alt-Delete to reboot the system. Next, we'll press F6 to bring up the boot menu. And from there, we'll select the CD, DVD options to boot from the ISO that we mounted. So now that we've rebooted, we'll press Enter here to start the ESXi 5.0 installation. Then we'll press F11 to accept the license and continue. Now the system is looking for hard drives, and in a few seconds it's going to find one, and we'll just press Enter to continue with the default selection there. And it's going to come up with a prompt for the default keyboard layout, and we'll just accept that, and press Enter to continue. Now we'll enter the root password, and we'll confirm that password, and then we'll press Enter to continue. So we'll just confirm the installation and hit F11 to go ahead and do the install.
So our installation is complete, and here we'll just press Enter to reboot. So we've completed our reboot, but as you can see, our IP address is zero. So we'll set a static IP address by pressing F2. Now we'll enter the password that we supplied during installation. And we'll scroll down and select Configure Management Network. So we'll set our VLAN. And then we'll go ahead and set the IP configuration. We want to set the static IP. And then we'll provide the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway IP. and we'll press enter to accept our changes. Next, we're gonna provide our DNS settings. So we'll set the primary and secondary DNS server, and we'll also supply our host name. And once we've done that, we'll press Enter to accept. Now we're going to add our DNS suffix and press Enter to accept. So here we'll press the Escape key and then press Yes to accept the changes. Now we're done configuring the management network. We'll want to test it, but first we need to restart it. And once it's restarted, so now we're going to test the changes to our management network. And we are seeing the pings are successful, but as we would expect, the host fails because we have not yet registered the name with the DNS. But that's OK. We've actually uh, completed our installation. You see that IP address there at the bottom is the IP address of the host we just installed. If you enter that IP address into your browser, you'll be able to download the vSphere client from this host.